Talk to me about Ferrari. What what stands out to you on their design? And do you think we'll, we'll, we'll talk about rankings as as um, a, a bookend point? But do you think potentially they're second of the of the rest chasing Red Bull? I think the thing that you know we talked about last time that I was very happy to see some from Ferrari was that they finally committed to this downwashing solution. So they've got the downwashing solution now. I know this is not everything. Side pods are not everything. There's a lot of work that's gone into the floor, I'm sure, um, from that standpoint as well. But generally speaking, the Ferrari looks, at least to my eyes, it passes the eye test now. Like I think, okay, this looks like a legit, you know, racing car that has a lot of kind of the aerodynamic features that I would think that a fast car needs. But the other thing I was wanting to look at is how's their degradation because they suffered so much with degradation last year that the drivers really couldn't push, you know, they couldn't push lap lap after lap. That's where the Red Bull was kind of head and shoulders above everybody else. So I think Ferrari said, all right, we're really good on one lap pace, but we now need to figure out how we can be good over a full race distance with degradation. So during testing, they were doing a lot of long runs hard tire, medium tire, long runs. And the degradation looked really good, actually. It looked much improved. And I think depending on whether or not you want to believe members of the Italian media or not, um, you know, feedback that's coming out of um, out of the Italian media was that, yes, the team's very happy with, and this has been a marked sort of step change in durability, you know, of the tires themselves, you know, and how much they're able to use the tires uh, during the race distance. So I think that could be a game changer for them. If now, you know, you got Leclerc and signs that are actually able to push uh, during a full race distance and they're not suffering such bad degradation. And if they still maintain their single lap pace, which, you know, again, we can't see fuel loads, we can't see engine maps, engine settings, or, you know, how much they're using their hybrid deployment or any of that stuff. But it still looked fast. I mean, you know, they're, they're not putting up Haas numbers. So, you know, something is something has still been maintained that allows them to still be fast over a single lap, but then the long run pace looks really good. I'm all about that life, Dr. Rubs, and hopefully for millions of watching F1 fans around the world that they can be or, or present that challenge to Max Verstappen in that Red Bull, but... Here again, conjecture and speculation. Hey, talk to yeah. me about talk to me about McLaren, <laughs> Doctor Robs, because um, if uh, if the one thing that we can read into testing is countenance and body language, both of um, McLaren's drivers in Oscar and Lando cut forlorn figures, didn't they? They felt ugh, their livery launch was one of promise and potential. Optimism was the the kind of emotion of the day. If that's true, then testing was the exact opposite, right? What what do you make of their car? Yeah, so Bahrain has always been a tr- tough track mm. for McLaren. I think previously, so so I, I love running Bahrain on my sim rig. I mean, I, I do some sim racing just uh, for fun. You know, I think it helps me with my mind to understand the physics of the tracks and then kind of equate that to the aerodynamics that you need. So that helps me in some of my content creation, but also my general sort of understanding. So I love to run the track. Bahrain is a great track, but it has such a heavy braking zone in the turn one off of that long straight. And previously in the past, this is where McLaren really struggled. They struggled with braking, you know, and managing brake temps and things like that. So obviously we can't see any of that during the um, during this. We don't know how much they're struggling based off of the onboards or based off of the driver feedback with brake temps. But it did look like that they had some reliability issues, right? That they were troubleshooting. I think at one point they were troubleshooting a fuel leak and there was a couple of things that were going on. So reliability is always something to think about. Bahrain has never been a good track for them. So I'm not, I'm not one to just bury them right now. Like maybe a lot of other people want to do, but they did have a bit of a, you know, an evolution, um, an evolution of their car. I wouldn't, yeah, call it a revolution. I mean, they had, They've now also switched to sort of an underbite concept. Sorry, an overbite concept. They have an overbite concept and they have a forward wing, which like we talked about last time is not like the cis wing that Mercedes had. It's much thinner. So those are the things that jumped out to me immediately. They have a bit of reprofiling of the side pod as well. 
Um, I believe the floor edge is different. I think they've moved maybe closer a bit to a, a Red Bull style floor edge as well. So probably the tricks are under the car and we just can't see them yet. But yeah, you're right. I guess body language, sort of, you know, how the team is reacting, the size of the smiles and the after practice, um, you know, interviews and things like that. None of that looked very positive in my mind. So I'll be very keen to see really what happens in free practices, but not just in Bahrain, but after Bahrain mm -hmm. as well, right? Because there's just something about that track that just doesn't sit well with their car.